Hi everyone and welcome to a comparison video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison and today we're comparing Keyscapes with Pianotech, two absolute juggernauts of the online digital piano VST space. One is modeling, one is sampling, both have exemplary reviews online and I have really loved getting to know both of them as well. We're gonna line up some of the more similar sounds so you can hear them back to back and also talk about the differences and how those plugins operate, perhaps give you a better look so that you can decide which one is more suited for your needs because there is no clear winner here. It really is what they're focused on and one does some things better than the other and we'll get into all of that. If it's the first time that you have found us here on the channel, we'd also really appreciate if you subscribed because we'd love to have you back for more videos in the future. So without further ado, let us get started with the comparison of Keyscapes and Pianotech right away. So we are here with Keyscapes and Pianotech. We got them happening. Two very different plugins, um, but both uh, kind of geared towards, uh, in a lot of ways, the same user, which is uh, somebody looking for a highly detailed sound and looking for a plugin that can provide a wide range of keyboard instrument sounds. I mean, they both do this. The, there's fundamental differences in terms of how they offer that to their end users. So Keyscapes, there's no option. You're just getting the whole bundle, uh, one size fits all, and it is a steeper price point. Um, and you're looking at $400 for the pack, but then at the same time, I kind of like the fact that they just force you to get the whole thing. At first, I was a little bit annoyed that there wasn't some sort of a stripped down option. Uh, you know, after a while, I got over it. Uh, Pianotech, we've got the standard version, which is the middle version. There's kind of a light standard and then there's a pro. Pro gives you in uh, just kind of a fanatical level of um, individual note modification that you can make versus uh, the same types of modifications, but to the overall instrument. So. Uh, I mean, if you really had to get in there uh, and get super detailed, let's call it, I was thinking of another word, um, and fix individual notes in a recording or uh, make those kinds of modifications, and if you have to output at an insane fidelity, you know, it'll let you do all of that. But otherwise, I think standard is quite acceptable to, to everybody. When you get standard, I think you get it with maybe three instruments, two or three instruments that you can choose from um, with that, but then everything else is um, added on. It's about $60 an instrument to add it on. So by the time you get exactly what you want on Pianotech, uh, you're, you'll probably have spent you know about the same amount of money as you would have uh, on Keyscapes. So the value is about the same. Um, how these two plugins produce sound is very different as well. Pianotech, as many of you probably already know, but if you don't, Pianotech uses a technology called modeling. It's basically algorithmically generated versus working from a set of samples. Um, Keyscapes works from a set of samples. So they've gone and recorded all of these instruments in a number of different environments with a number of different microphones and they've got a lot of uh, cool technology that allows them to uh, kind of blend those samples together into a really seamless, cohesive uh, experience of playing it. So they arrive at their sound in a very different way. Um, but the range of sounds that are available with both is pretty similar. And so I was very intrigued to be able to line these up uh, and compare uh, the tones side by side uh, for you to hear at home and, and of course for me to just have some fun with myself. So we've got Pianotech 7 and we've got Keyscape. 
Uh, and we have the Yamaha Grand that Piontech offers. They call it the YC5 because they obviously didn't get rights to the name to be able to say Yamaha in there. Um, but it is a, it's a prox, it's, I think it's just their C5 Grand, uh, probably, uh, which would make it about a six foot seven, you know, one size up from the C3, um, great C3 recording. Uh, or VST would be, of course, Alicia's keys within the native instruments universe. So this is one size up there, uh, and that's the closest that they offer to the C7, which is what uh, Keyscapes has done. Um, and I've got both lined up with some fairly similar settings here, and it's really quite interesting to hear where all of those differences start to manifest. Uh, so let's just listen first, before I drone on too much longer, to the tonal differences and the behavioral differences between these two instruments. And we will start with Piano Tech because it's on the left. So here is Piano Tech and I'm going to play exactly the same thing, or the closest I can to it, uh, just to give you an example of those differences. And now let's hear Keyscapes. So there are great things about both. And when I hear the keyscapes, there's a certain warmth I'm getting off the keyscapes that I'm not necessarily off the piano tech. There's a great dynamicism that we're getting off of uh, the piano tech as well. Now, there's definitely a substantially wider variety of tone that I'm getting out of the piano tech. But in some senses, that range of uh, tonal uh, uh, dynamic is probably a little exaggerated versus what you'd actually get in front of the piano in real life.
because Piano Tech is using modeling and uh, Keyscapes isn't, there is more control, the more ability to get in and really tinker with things on Piano Tech because you're manipulating the computer algorithm directly. Whereas Keyscapes gives you some level of control, but they're not going to tell you all of the nitty gritty of how they've decided to, you know, knit these uh, samples together. That's kind of trade secrets that a lot of these companies have is, okay, we have a gigabyte worth of samples. Now, how do we stitch this together? How do we, uh, you know, produce this coherent playing experience? Well, they don't all use exactly the same types of technologies and approaches. That's kind of where the art of this VST world comes from, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so because of that, the interface is quite a bit different. Whereas they give you uh, the ability to uh, affect reverb and some performance related things. You've got EQ, compensation, or uh, compensation, compressor, uh, you, you know, a little bit of tweaking here and there. Uh, the level of detail that you can um, access on Piano Tech is probably tri triple or quadruple that of Keyscape. You can even get in here and start mucking around with very specific uh, mic placement, types of mic, uh, stereo width, um, sound speed, like just bonker stuff. Still lots to like about the intimacy and the warmth uh, that you do get out of the Keyscapes. <laughs> Let's check out the U4, because here is their upright piano from Piano Tech. Now I already did a review of Keyscapes and I made no secret of the fact that I loved how they had done the upright. So much detail. That is just so great. And you could definitely try and uh, muck with the tuning on the Americana to try and get that exact kind of sound. But I'm not sure, let's try weathered. I think there are certain mechanical artifacts that you're getting off of an old upright piano that just aren't part of what would be norm would be considered normally the piano sound algorithm. Like I don't even know you could get those kinds of weird mechanical sounds happening in piano tech. So this is definitely a great functional and you know, you can play with the level of weatheredness and tuningness, uh, unison width, you can really push that.
So that's the advantage of piano tech. You get this range, whereas with this, they've sampled one piano and that piano is just in the condition that it's in. But if you are looking for that vintage sound, holy, Dinah, did they ever get that perfect? So there's another great example where you've got, you know, precision and a lot of flexibility with piano tech, but there's a certain authenticity that Keyscape is giving you where if that instrument is exactly what you want, it's going to be really hard to top the character that they've managed to capture on that piano. Now let's switch to some roads. So what do we got over on the Keyscape side? Uh, with electric pianos. So we've got a Rhodes Mark I, and so let's do the Rhodes Mark I, and we've got Rhodes Mark I, and a tremolo. Sounds good, and over here we've got Okay, so that's piano tech. What do we got over here? So similar to what I was getting off the acoustic piano, there's just a fatness to that sound that at least without significant tweaking you don't quite get on the piano tech There's also a detail on the on the top end of the sound that I'm getting out of the keyscapes that isn't doesn't feel like it's quite Yeah, it's like the piano tech is a, such a perfect sound, but, and you wouldn't think that you'd be missing anything if that's what you heard, like, yeah, that sounds great. There is something about the imperfections and a warmth to the realism of how they've captured it that is quite compelling. Hmm. 
And let's try the Mark II. So there's that comparison. Uh, they've also got the Wurlitzer. So let's just check that out too. So there's the Whirly comparison. Fascinating the differences here. And then finally, let's just take a last quick look at the Celeste or Celesta. I think it's just Celeste, isn't it? So Celeste original. And then let's take a look at That's pretty close.
So really a fascinating comparison when you put these two side by side. When it comes to acoustic piano, uh, what piano tech is able to generate out of its Steinway D, Steinway B, the Grotrian, and I really like a lot of the C. Beckstein 282 settings that they've got in there. Those pianos for me uh, have a greater uh, range of character, uh, a little more versatile than the C setting settings that I get, C7 settings that I get on Keyscape. But the warmth and the realism and the detail that I get out of Keyscapes for all of the other vintage instruments. And not even to say that the acoustic part uh, is somehow disappointing, it's, it's not. I mean, there's great variety in what you can get out of the C7. Um, I just, it wouldn't be my go-to for an exposed solo piano thing, but there's tons of really amazing presets where I would see myself using uh, Keyscapes, even an acoustic piano, for some production applications. Um, but as soon as you move into the Rhodes uh, or the Wurlitzer or the Mallet instruments or any of those things, I mean, there's a, just a massive number of instruments and they're all sampled and captured at just a crazy level of detail uh, with Keyscape. So uh, really kind of two different beasts and it's gonna depend I think entirely on what you think you're going to wind up using the most. If you're going to wind up using acoustic piano the most, you're going to want to be comparing piano tech to maybe the Ravenscroft or the Garretton CFX or VSL or something like that. And piano tech is great. It's, it, it holds its own and in, in some cases there's aspects of that plugin I like even more. Um, but when it comes to all of those other keyboard instruments, um, I, th this Keyscapes is just pure beauty, pure art, like it really does put you in front of the instrument and in a way that I definitely don't get out of the default Logic uh, instruments. There's just not even close to that level of detail. It's just so much fun. Anyway, two very different plugins, but I hope that the comparison, putting them side by side has been helpful. Uh, to everybody out there. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube and we'll be back of course with more videos every week. So be sure to subscribe if you've liked what you've seen, you found it helpful or entertaining. We'd love to have you back for more.